one of my favourite ways of catching fish in the springtime is definitely down the edge. I feel like we've had a winter of shipping back silver fish or you know, fishing for carp on the pole, but in the open water, we start to get a few slightly longer days, the temperatures creep up, and all of a sudden you can catch well in the edge and feed in. I want to talk today about a little tactic that I've sort of developed over the last few years, which I think just stacks the odds in my favour in the spring and also in the autumn when the water's a bit clearer. Maybe the edge fishing isn't as prolific as it is in the summer. And particularly on mixed venues like where we are today. This is Damson Pool at Decoy Lakes near Peterborough. And it's a mixed head of fish in here. There's a lot of F1s like this one. And some quite big F1s. I actually had them in the match on here yesterday up to about three pounds. Some good size F1s and also an awful lot of carp. And the beauty of this approach is it's got the finesse to sort out those better F1s and gives you the chance of landing those bigger carp as well. So I'm going to get back in and while I'm shipping out, I'll talk you through what I'm up to. So the whole sort of theory on this method comes from the fact that obviously this time of year in the sort of spring and in the autumn, the water's a little bit clearer. And obviously it's also colder, which means the fish don't feed quite as aggressively. Now, if this was the middle of the summer, we'd be having to find very, very shallow depths of water, maybe as little as eight or ten inches to catch these fish effectively because you can guarantee the amount of competition they generate would mean those fish would be wanting to push the bait right up into the shallowest water so if you tried to fish in too deep water you just end up with lion bites and foul lookers now this time of year as i say the fish are more lethargic so when they do come in to feed down the edge they do so a little less aggressively and that's often why you can catch in the winter spring and autumn by fishing a little bit further down that marginal slope in slightly deeper water. So what I'm actually doing today is fishing a lovely little plateau that I've found that's about six metres down the edge to my left. And I'm just feeding sweet corn and micro pellets. The rig I've got on lets me present that corn almost on the drop and lay it against the slope so that you saw that there was a fast bite then. I actually missed that one. That's what you get a lot of this time of year when you fish with rigs like this. Fast bites, fish intercepting that bait as it just drops through the last sort of foot of water and you catch fish and get bites that you wouldn't see if you had heavier bulk down rigs and patterns. It's all very well pinning your bait to the bottom as we do in summer when edge fishing but this time of year I believe you miss out on an awful lot of fish if you do that. This approach just gives you a little bit more finesse and as I said Particularly when it comes to F1s and those shy little dinks that you often get off them like we just had there. I think you see those bites and often get those fish that you wouldn't do on other setups. So I'll try and catch one more for you. And then I'll show you what I'm doing, how I'm feeding and just talk you through the rigs, bait and feeding that I've used to help me uh, get the best out of this sort of situation. I actually drew this peg in a match yesterday, it was the uh, it was a practice match for the Angling Trust Winter League final. And I caught nearly all my fish, well certainly 70% of my fish, on this line that we're on right now. As I said, it's worth just taking the time with the plummet to find a little flat area. I and mean, this is a lovely little plateau there. Today, obviously, sport's not quite as good. We've got cameras on the bank and GoPros right over the top of where we're, we're fishing. So the fish definitely seem a little bit more... Scatter. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say we've had less indications. I think yesterday we perhaps had less indications, but the bites were cleaner, which I think is often the way when you've got disturbance on the bank and the fish just aren't happy and confident. But listen, what I'll be able to do today is give you a good idea of how I approach this sort of swim. And hopefully it'll help you when you're fishing over the next couple of weeks when we're moving into those cold spring days when this sort of fishing really comes into its own. So I actually had 70 pound yesterday, or just short, 69.10, which won the section, won this bank. Um, the end peg right at the top there, he had a lovely day, he dobbed 100 pound of fish, but that tells you how the fish are feeding. You know, when anglers are catching on baits like bread and dobbing still, Tells you the fish generally aren't really feeding, and that again is 
when this sort of more negative margin approach can be a lot better at a nice fast beat. I'll just feed again. Because we're only feeding little bits of bait, I think you can afford to be, I wouldn't say positive with the feed, but you can definitely afford with, with this style of fishing to keep a bit trickling through the water because that way you're sort of pulling fresh fish in all the time. You're making the most of that presentation we talked about, that on the drop style, and you're able to pull some of them bigger fish. So, one thing I do do slightly differently when it comes to feeding at this time of year. In the summer, I almost always need ever so slightly down the slope to where I'm actually fishing. My thinking with that is, by doing that, you can fish in, in clean water. So the bait's slightly below where you thought was a nice bite. Now, do you see how that bite came just as that rig settled? That's what you get with this sort of rig and this sort of approach that maybe you don't get on a more positive bulk down pattern. So literally, we tap that bit of bait in there. You saw the curve on the rig as that corn fell through the water. And if you look at it in the air, Joe, in a tank, you'll notice, although it is quite a heavy bait sweet corn, it does have a nice sort of fall. And with it being bright and visual and yellow, I think that really does help to fool those fish and catch them on the drop. This might be, hopefully, one of the better carp in here. So we'll get it in the net. And then, could be another big F1, but it's fighting more like a carp, this one, I think. Yeah, let's have a look. Is it a little common? It is. A little common. That's what this lake's full of. Fish of sort of two to, you know, seven or eight pounds, and a couple of sort of six pounders yesterday. But that's nailed, look, I only can see that. That's nailed right in the top lip. So we're getting back, and I'll talk you through the rigs, bait, and feeding that I use. And then hopefully we'll catch you a couple more fish and it'll help you on your way to another good little method this spring. Right, when it comes to spring and winter time margin fishing, I think balanced tackle is absolutely essential, especially when you've got mixed fish like we have in this lake today. You could catch an 8 ounce F1, your next fish could be a 10 pound carp, so you've got to be able to land everything you hook without bumping it or spooking it. So the elastic in here is the Preston 11 Hollow. It's one of my favourite uh, cool water carp elastics. I've just got that through uh, a top two of my pole. It's actually a match number two with a, um, a number three, which I've drilled out and put a little roller puller in. Love the Preston roller pullers as well. So that's the elastic setup. It's got a little bead on the end there, <coughs> uh, which I attach the elastic to. Now it's a, the, the line two, sorry. It's a nice, robust mainline 017 reflow power. Two reasons for that. One, obviously, nice and robust, so you can catch loads of fish on one rig. But also, because we're sort of fishing on the drop at times today, because we are sort of trying to present that fall of the corn, I think a thick main line is, is nice, because it gives you a slower fall as well. Uh, and obviously, another bonus is, when you're fishing with little strung out rigs like this, it doesn't tangle very easily. We've got a single number eight back shot, which is halfway between the pole tip and the float. You've got to have 12 inches of line between your pole tip and your float here at Decoy, so that's what we've got on there. Now the floats, these are beautiful. It's a RW uh, Maggie. Uh, it's got a slightly thicker uh, bristle in that, 1.5 mil hollow bristle in that. Um, again, carbon slim, uh, carbon stem should I say, a nice slim pattern so I can follow that bait through the water. And the shotting is just my usual sort of taper. I use this pattern an awful lot, so if you look between six inch hook length shot above that then got another shot five inches above that another one about three and a half inches above that three inches and two inches so it tapers as it goes down just to give you that fall through the last couple of feet of water and they're just number 10 balabini shot on there hook lengths 013 power line that's six inches long as i say and the hook choice is a size 16 or 18 i'll use either i used an 18 yesterday i've actually Stepped up to a 16 today because the fishing's been so good. And that is an SLWG from Guru. And what that lets you do, I'll just show you how I hook my corn. A smaller piece for you. I just hook my corn by going through the side and out, leaving plenty of bristle showing like that. 
So when anything picks that up, you're going to absolutely nail it. And it also is a good robust way of hooking that, so the bait always stays on. Moving on to bait preparation. Again, lovely and cheap, lovely and simple. This is a Sonia bait sweet corn. I think that's the F1 corn. It's lovely that. All I do is put some in a tub and I put a good square of this stuff on it, which is the Fuca Sensate Natural Liquid. I love Sensate. So confident in it, folks. Caught so many fish since I've been adding that to my corn. Pellets, ground bait, everything. So a <clears throat> generous squirt of the liquid and that just gives it that Sensate flavour and makes it stink. Micro pellet preparation. In a similar vein really now luckily at decoy here you don't have to use fishery pellets you can use what you like these are the sonia baits pro feed pellets to prepare them all i do I'll just show you is i get my water before i start even with adding the pellets i add the sensate always give the bottle a little shake before you take the cap off and i just put three good squirts for about a pint of micas a little bit block that nozzle give it a good squeeze so three nice squirts like that. Mix that into the water, you can actually see that working in the water and clouding it. Now you can see that, but that water's gone really cloudy now. And I'll add my micro pellets to it. I've got a guru bait strainer in there. Add my micro pellets to it like that. I'll leave that for around about. Come on, I just have to grab that bag. I'll leave that for around about five minutes five to eight minutes this time of year <clears throat> it all depends on the on the type of pellet but when you're pole fishing i, I like the, the pellet to soak right through so it's not it's not as urgent as when you're method fishing when you want that little bit of a core still on it so i'll leave that probably eight minutes or so and then obviously the beauty of the groove strainers is i just literally lift the strainer out the pellets are all in there once they're soaked and i can just leave them to stand for another 20 minutes to half an hour before fishing with them. So it's nice and simple bait preparation. All you need, some corn, some micros. And I personally, as I say, I'm mega confident adding the Sensate liquid to everything. Right, I just want to talk quickly about plumbing up. Now the first thing I want to say about margin fishing is you can't spend enough time with a plummet looking for the right place to fish. It really is so important. Now, in colder weather, when the water is clearer, as we've established it is at the moment you can never i don't think catch too close to yourself if, if it was the summer if it was red hot, i'd be looking on a top kit a top four just for a line where i could catch really quickly in the latter stages but today we know that water's clearer so the minimum away from myself i want to fish is a top six that does change if you've got cover so if, say you've got a big bush or tree i think fish behave a bit differently but obviously we haven't here today so what i'm doing is just dropping that plummet in and obviously I'm at an advantage because I know already what the bottom's like. But look where I'm fishing. That is a lovely little plateau. Look how little the depth changes between there, which is about 14, 15 inches from the bank. Move out. It's flat. There's another little stick there, look. But yeah, look how flat that is. It's absolutely perfect for this style of fishing. But in a match situation... And like yesterday, for example, I worked my way along from the edge of the pallet back. I didn't, couldn't go past the pallet because there's another angle on the other side. So from the edge of the pallet back towards me until I found this lovely little plateau. And just look at that. Absolutely perfect. But, you know, if you go down here, for example, you'll see similar depth. But if I go here, oh, it's a slope. It's not as flat. I've taken my time and found the right area to fish on and one other thing about edge fishing now this might seem obvious but you can't always polish a turd by that i mean if you've got a peg with an edge that plumbs up horrible don't necessarily expect to catch down the edge you'll notice if you look at results from any venues when it comes to margin fishing weights it's generally the same pegs that throw them up and that's because the bottom's right the contour of the bottom on them pegs is right for the edge to work so don't try and force it if you literally can't get a nice inside slope to fish on. Generally, spend a bit of time with a plummet and you'll find somewhere to fish. Channel memberships, we've got loads of exclusive content for you guys to enjoy now. For just 4 99 a month, you get four videos with at least one live match, sometimes two. On top of that, you get an exclusive members only live stream 
with myself and a star angler. So, so far I've had Lee Kerry, James Dent, Christian Jones, just to name the few. Loads of great top content, plus... If you want to pay $7.99 a month, you can get our Catch More Media Elite package, which gets you all the edited content you just mentioned yes. a whole week earlier than everybody else. Excellent. Even the stuff that goes on the main channel, folks, you'll get it a week earlier. So if you want the real edge over your mates, you want to know the killer edges from the stars before everybody else, that is the package to go for. Get in there first. Go and check it out. You will not regret it. See you over there. As with all edge fishing, one of the key things to get right with this sort of uh, work is timing, when you go on the line. Now, often, I think it's a great way to start a day. At the beginning of the match, you don't have to give it too long. I'd say if you've not had a bite down your edge in the first sort of 10 minutes, I'd be looking to move on to other swims. And I suppose, not dissimilar to the summer, the last sort of two hours is when this sort of method can really come into its own, as the fish sort of move up the slope very similar to summertime fishing where you know the fish still still i believe go on the same patrol routes late in the day it's just to feed slightly differently so they will naturally push into the edge even in cold weather and obviously this there we are it was a nice bite on the drop but you see how that same thing happened again with that little bit of a curve on that strung rig i hope this is another nice f1 i think it is what we've had to do now, and I'll talk more about this in a second, but I've had to just change that, that sort of feeding to suit how these fish are actually responding today. Now, yesterday, in the match, I was feeding predominantly micro pellets. And that seemed right. You seemed to, like, get a clean response off micros. It was as if the fish came in, I was just in the corner of the mouth, absolutely gorgeous fish. It was as if the fish came in, to that little pile of micros, followed it down and ate the corn really confidently. I started off doing the same today, put in probably about 50 or 60 micros in the pot, three or four bits of corn. But what actually happened was I got a lot of line bites, a lot of fish sat off the bottom, as you probably saw in that first little clip where I missed that couple of bites. The fish were milling about and not really eating confidently so I've cut down the micros now and slightly up the quantity of corn there's about I think seven bits of corn in there now and only about thumbnail of micros so only probably 10 or 15 micros so that's just in response to how the fish are feeding if you're having problems with line bites with foul lookers cut out the micro pellets and you can, you can up the amount of corn. I wouldn't always say you need to actually up the amount of corn. If you, there's a lot of fish there, sometimes feeding a little bit less is the key to hooking the fish in the mouth. And obviously, as it gets warmer, if we're still having that same sort of problem, what you can do is fish with a bulk down rig. So a more traditional, you know, warm weather margin rig where you've got a slightly heavier float and a little bulk at the top of the hook length. I tend to use, for this sort of fishing, in shallower water as it warms up, something like an RW Muddy, or for really big carp, I'll use the Mick Wilkinson um, Diamond Margins. They've got a, a very thick bristle, so aren't ideally suited for uh, this more sensitive work that we're doing today. So yeah, as I was saying, timings, you know, always, well not always, but if you've got a nice edge, if you've got that bottom that plums up nicely. I'd always be inclined to have a little start down the edge because there's nothing to lose at that point. We're not piling the bait in and we know we're probably not gonna fish there again until the latter stages of the match. So if you can get a good start down the edge, then obviously you, you're setting yourself up perfectly um, for a good day on every other line as well. You're getting some weight in the, in the net nice and early. Um, and obviously if it doesn't work, nothing's spoiled. You'll not be coming back there till later. Um, and then obviously when you go on it late in the day, I do tend to prime it before I go on it. I'll put in probably a similar sort of pot to what we've got on here, a medium, medium guru sort of cad pot amount of bait, 15 minutes before I go on it, and then have a drop in. It's not like the summer where you're piling loads of bait with a big pot and try and, uh, and pull those fish in that way. Taking my time, I think this is probably a carp. It looked like it was in the mouth when it took the bait. It was that little dink again, so. Good chance it will be. 
Oh yeah, little common, that three or four pounds. And again, that's just nailed in the lip. But you can see from the bikes we're getting how everything's working nicely. It's that, that little bit of a dink on the flow as the rig settles and the fish has sucked that corn in. And it's been able to do so because obviously we've got that slightly longer hook length than what we use for standard margin fishing and that strong sort of taper of, uh, of number 10 shot. So it's almost like fishing on the drop really. We'll catch you one more and then we better sign off and go and uh, do some work on one of the other lakes. Got some filming to do today, but I really wanted to just show you this little tactic because it's worked ever so well for me at, at different places over the last few years. So again, I'm going to put six bits of corn in. Just a thumbnail of mine because hardly any this time. And we'll get back in and hopefully catch you another one. I mentioned earlier as well, the thought you have to put into where you feed. I mean, ideally, and it seems to be the way now with this, you're able to feed on top of where you're fishing, drag your bait up into it, and then you, again, you're almost creating that little column of bait, the fish follow that down, come in, and suck in your corn and miss the little bite then. You will miss the odd bite with corn, because it's a, I wouldn't say a hard bait, but a slightly tougher bait than, say, a maggot or a piece of bread. You do miss the odd bite, but I think what it makes up for in being bright and visual more than makes up for its little bit of toughness at this time of year. And the other nice thing, obviously, because it is quite a heavy bait, if you are fishing a more difficult slope, I mean, this is a dream today, in that it's a nice sort of flattish bottom. But if you're fishing on a more gradual slope, what you'll often be able to do is see when your corn is on the bottom, so you can lay it in and let it just rest against the slope. I've even done it in the past at Western Pools a couple of years ago where I fished a very light float, dotted it down and had it so the corn actually took the float under. And that way, obviously, you've got the ultimate in sensitivity, but on other times it's overkill, you don't need that. Like today, these fish are feeding quite confidently. We've got that lovely little plateau that I showed you, so it's much more effective to just feed wait for a little bite and you know everything's set nicely so see how we had those indications straight away and now it's quiet if we get one it'll be a clean bite but i'm also very tempted to come back and feed again because i suspect that bait believe it or not has been eaten already i'm going to give it five more seconds and we're going to come in and repeat the process remember we had that lovely little bite on the drop then as it settled it went straight under that was a nice little bite. Right, but still think we need to reset the trap. Yeah. Always like to find quite a small piece of corn if you can. You don't want a, a great big, great big piece really. You want like a, a small to medium size that you can leave plenty of hooks showing. Feeding slightly more this time, just see if it'll hold me in the peg. And give me time for the second bite if we miss the first one. Those last two have been very quick. We're going in. I'm feeding a similar sort of place around the float. Let's just see how long it takes this time. But you can see with that bristle, we can really read that fall. And the other thing I like about that slightly strong tapered pattern is I honestly think you, you spook less fish this time of year with that. I do think if you've got a heavy float and a bulk and a fish runs into the line, especially F1s, they can be very crafty and I think it can sometimes spook them away, but a little bit of a taper. I just think it's slightly slack a line in the water and the fish will feed more confidently. No, I've gone a little bit quiet, but I'm getting a liner now after that bait settled, so that makes me think could be that some bigger carp have come in. When you've got mixed, that was a nice bite. And again, that little shy dink. Now, I'm just not convinced if you fish with a thicker bristle or a bigger float, I'm not saying you wouldn't see the bite. 
there's such delicate little dinks on the float. I often think this approach really does give you the best approach, the best way of making the most of it. That's another nice F1. I hope you've enjoyed that, folks. So it's a nice little method. It's worked very well for me in the past. When you've got big F1s like this in your peg and carp, mixed fish, it's a lovely way of, uh, of catching in the winter, spring and autumn. Right, I've just made a little change. I just wanted to try and force those fish down a little bit tighter. So what I'm actually doing now, I've put a smaller Guru Cad Pot on and I'm actually squeezing the micros into it, just giving them a little push. And I can do something which you've probably heard of or seen a lot of anglers do in the past called clumping. And what that is, is basically putting that pot just under the surface of the water and letting the little holes, the little air hole, little suction holes, just above the pot, just get to work. And you can see that all that bait then fell out in one clump and went straight down to the bottom. And there was a bite then straight away. So if you can imagine that corn going down as I feed it normally in a little, little scattered area, what you get with a clumped presentation is all of it going down together. So that means that the bait does in theory, get to the bottom a little bit faster. And there, you can see the effect that's had, is that's pushed those fish down. Now, it's just a way, it doesn't work all the time. As I said, I love, love the fact that with this, you're almost catching on the drop and getting those bites as the fish follow that corn down to the bottom. But when there's a few more fish there, this is a really good way of catching a bit faster, just plumping that bait into a little pile. It's a good F1. And we actually missed a bite there first off as well, so it goes to prove how effective it is. So we'll do that one more time. All we're doing, oh, we can look at it, it's a lively one. All we're doing is single bit of corn on the hook as before. Probably get a few bites today on an expander, but yesterday I definitely found the fish wanted corn, so I've kept things dead simple. The cad pot, all I'm doing there is quite simply two bits of corn, or three bits of corn actually, keep it the same as last time. Topping that up with micros, and then I just call it thumbing, just pressing the top of the pot with the thumb. Not too hard, because you obviously want that bait to come out. You'll notice that's a small guru pot as well. You do have to fish with the right size pot for the amount you want to feed when you when you're clumping. It just makes life easier. I mean, you can really sort of squeeze it in. Get to where we're fishing. And we put the pot just slightly under the water like that. And lift it out. And that bait all goes down in one little clump. And as I said, if you imagine that's one little one little column of bait going down to the bottom. And you can see how much cleaner them bites have become since we've changed that. That's my old mate Chris. I owe a lot of uh, a lot of my commercial fishing knowledge to Christian Jones. To be fair, he uh, when we did the match within edges project together, he really helped hone my understanding of this sort of thing. That's a big F1. I don't expect to be able to do this or catch like this all day i think it's just a little tool to have in your army if you want a real good peg and there's loads of fish there it can be deadly but you can see how it's sort of sped up that bite time just by by pushing those fish down in the water column and bringing a slightly faster bite so we'll catch you one more clumping and uh, then we'll get back to it so again single corn plenty of points showing three bits of corn in the pot Topping it up all the way with micros, so probably, how many micros are in there? 50 or 60 micros, probably to fill that pot to the top. Getting to where we're fishing. Always lay the rig down the slope, I know it's obvious, but it's worth just thinking about. Pot goes under the water. Lift it out, and you'll see your baits come out. Lift your rig on top of where you've fed. Keep that back shot just 
off the surface of water, a little dink there. You can see how quick that is. Since we started clumping that bait and forcing the fish down in the water. As I said, probably more of an F1 type tactic this. You might find you catch a few less carp doing this way as opposed to sprinkling a bit of corn as we were before. But there's a them F1 seem to be what's in the peg now. It's not a bad little trick to have up your sleeve. And with fish like that coming, one a chuck, you'd soon build a massive weight.